So welcome to the end of season video for the 2030 season with Eggerson in this Builder Nation. In this video, we have a match which is crucial for the next 12 months of this save, in my opinion. It's absolutely huge. We'll recap the signings we made in the summer as well and then do the end of season review. So stay tuned and let's get into it. Oh, and the intro doesn't have any sound anymore due to some stupid copyright intro stuff. So I'll fix some random audio over top of that. This is just an intro. You better believe it. Jesus, that was bad. <sighs> yep, welcome to the series. So welcome to the end of season review and the final game of the season as well we're going to get done today. But before we get into it, let's have a look at the transfers we did early on in this season. Two transfers to recap, both outs, and you will see one of them is a big out as well, which is upsetting, but kind of needed, I think. First off, Nicholas Erdegaard, who we picked up on a free transfer from Molde. We've ended up selling to Denmark, to Randers, the six foot four winger, striker, central mid. He just never performed too well, and he came in and said he wanted to leave. So we end up letting him go half a million. I think it's money well earned, in my opinion. He was only with us for six months, and we made half a million profit on him. And then Andre Pereira has ended up going to Nantes in France. Uh, disappointing, but at the same time, he was a player who never performed how we would have hoped he would have performed. So, yes, it's sad that he's leaving us, but we end up getting 1.8 million for him, and it's money well earned, in my opinion. We got him on a free transfer. You can see he never got over 7.0 rate, and he just never performed very well. So to get 1.8 million for him, in my opinion, is some, some good dealings. So the first player to look at on the ends, I think we didn't recap in the last video, and maybe I should have gone back and looked at it, but it's too late now. Um, Sashin Baloyi, who is a decent defensive mid. We picked him on a free transfer, and I didn't know how good he was going to be. I couldn't see all of his attributes at the time. But I'm fairly pleased with him. He's playing in our B team. He's played 17 games so far for our B team. And he's doing fairly, fairly well. You will see the new pizza chart on the updated version of the skin I'm using. It's nice to illustrate and check some things. So the next player to look at, we picked him up for 950k, which is probably a bit steep. 23-year-old Julian Legrade, and he is a Norwegian winger who, I don't know. I looked at Sam last year, we're really short of quality or wide. I looked at Sam last year, couldn't pick him up. We brought him in this year, 950k is probably a bit steep for him. But he does have some attributes which really do suit well for a wide man. So hopefully he can do well for us. The next player coming in for 100k is a winger who, again, I couldn't see everything about him. But again, I wanted to take a risk on him. So Ayobe Chakla is an 18-year-old Moroccan-Belgian winger who we pick up from Stad Marrakeen for 100k. And... He looks okay. He looks okay. Judging by his current value, he looks like we can get a return on him if I do decide he's not going to be good enough. Again, he's playing for our B team, and he's done fairly well with four goals in seven games so far. And the final player is a player who again popped up on our scan reports is Anderson from Brazil. Brazilian stroke Italian. Picked him up for £82,000. And I think there's profit in there. I'm hoping he could turn into our central midfielder on attack. And that's my hope in terms of the position that would suit him. And he looks good in that position. He's only played a couple of games both off the bench so far. He did pick up an injury and that's why he's not played many more. But I think he's a decent looking player. So after the Conference League final defeat to Lazio, we went into the second half of the campaign knowing we had no European football. And this team is a good team at this division, at this level. And the European football is what sometimes held us back in terms of getting the results because... Our players were tired, I was rotating, but we could go in full strength. And as you can see, it's been very beneficial in the second half of the season. One thing I would mention is we did go out in the cup to a low league side or learn on penalties. And I did put a fairly strong squad out. So it's 
very frustrating and disappointing to see us go out of the cup but since then we've been in really good form you can see here in july we got one win and two draws beating viking away from home we then in august got three wins and one draw only drawn to trump so we're beating the likes of Mulder 2-1 at home um september was a bit rough with two draws and one defeat our defeat away to odds before in October, we managed to get one win, one draw, one defeat, losing a Hinefoss away from home, which was very upsetting, very, very upsetting. But we've back, bounced back sorry, in November, beating Lillstrom 1-0 and drawing away from home to Rosenborg in the last game, which sees us sit in second place in the top flight after 29 games. Won 15, drew 10, losing four games. And it's in our hands. We are guaranteed the top four. So we are guaranteed European football next season. But a victory today would see us get Champions League football. You can see here, top two, get Champions League. We will get the league path second qualifying round. Third place will get us Europa League. Fourth place Europa League as well. I think that's depending on the winner of the cup. And that's depending on the winner of the cup. So there's a chance fourth place would be Conference League, I think depending on the winner of the cup, because two spots get Europe at the minute. Um, if we check who's in the cup final, I think it's... Yeah, Sarsborg Valerenga in the cup. And Valerenga have already got Europe. Um, and Sarsborg don't. So we would need... Sarsborg are actually second tier, I think, at the minute. Um, if we go to... Ah, I fail... If we go to the second tier, Sarsborg came third in the second tier, but in the cup final. So we need we need to do well in this game. So let's go into it. We've got Viking Stavanger at home. A victory would see us get Champions League football. A defeat could see us battling to just hold on and get Europa League football. Now, Urshal's out injured. But he has only got three goals all season. One thing I would say going into next season is I don't know who will be our first choice striker. Now, we do have someone in the youth team who I'm considering. But going into today's game, Carlo um, Vinicius is the striker. What I would say is I have fixed the face packs. So you can see, for example, Carlos Vinicius has a face, and so do some other people. Sort there, uh, Lorenz, for example, Apaya has a face now, etc. So really pleased to get that done. So let's get in, Rich, shall we? We'll look at the the team lineup as we go. So a victory at home today against Viking Stavanger would see us get into the Champions League. So our lineup today is going to be Hansen in goal. It's Fanny, Jurgensen, Holden and Scallon with Helland in front of them. And then we've got our Finnish, Finnish centre midfielder in Hemonsen in midfield alongside Sorte. Lorenz on the right wing, Apai on the left and Vinicius up top. Just wondering if Hemonen, I really struggle to pronounce his name. Let's just set a nickname. Christian the Finn. So Christian the Finn in centre of the field. He's an absolute beast. And I think we need to secure Champions League football just to make sure he stays at the club next year. So let's do it, please. Let's do it. Now Mulder are at home to Rosenborg and Valerenga are at home to Hunnefoss, who are already relegated to the bottom of the league. So I kind of fancy both of them to get a victory here, and we are at home to one of our one of our local divisional rivals in Viking Stavanger. Um, I'm hoping next season our B team might get into the the playable leagues because I've really focused on giving them players. I really focused on registering them players for that um, division. I really focused on making sure the managerial staff etc. that team were fixed. So I'm hoping. Hoping that helps in promotion. We'll find out. If not, I've wasted a lot of time focused on the B team this year. Make sure that their players were registered, etc. For that division. And make sure they were actually fit to play in that division. Lorenz is in. Oh! Lorenz, bear in mind, is a player who came from Viking Stavanger. 
almost puts us 1-0 up early. I'm just going to give us an encouragement shout here. See if that can get the players motivated. Molder do go up in the second place at the minute. They are 3-0 up against Rosenborg. So we do need to secure a victory here because Molder are guaranteed to win, I think, there. Be shocked if they if uh, Rosenborg came back from 3-0 down. We do win the header, Paya. Sort to with the header, back out to Paya. He goes back to Scallon, and then the Finn, Christian the Finn with a shot wide. Valerenga is still nil nil against Hunnefoss going in at the break. We have a, a corner here. We really have struggled this season in terms of goals. Goals, goals, goals has been our issue. And I like to say, I do have a player who's absolutely banging them in for our youth team, been with the club a couple of years now. Maybe next season is his time to get given a chance in the first team because nobody else has earned it. Nobody else deserves that spot as our striker. Our top goal scorer is a central midfielder at the minute. Our top goal scorer is one of our central midfielders in Sorte, who can play a striker, but I just fancy him more as a central mid. Okay, Skull on the left back goes into Halton. Will he pass it into Helan? No, he goes to Jurgensen. Not now into Helan. Goes out wide to Fanny. Fanny driving forward. He goes down the wing. Keeps on to it. Now Lawrence. Ball across. And Vinicius tucks it away. The key is to abuse. Abuse the striker and the strikers will score. Carlos Vinicius makes it. Eggerson's won. Viking Stavanger nil. And Fanny just continued to drive forward there. Ended up playing a fall to Lorenz, who tucked it across. Him with the assist. Vinicius with the goal. And we are coming up to the hour mark. And I think what I'm going to do is... I would like to move Thor to a front, because I just like him better. Vinicius I'm going to take off. And I'm going to bring on Larson in the centre of the field on attack. And I think at the minute, everybody else is fully fit. We have been rotating and giving people a bit of a break in the last few games just to make sure we had a full strength squad in the running. I didn't want people to be completely burned out. But you can see now we're over 73 minutes into the game. I think one of the changes going to make Bastions, who's been playing in defensive midfield recently, and is decent at it, will come on the pitch now playing defensive midfield. And maybe Hilm for Scallon, which just gives fresh legs in one of the fullback positions. But we are 1 0. I'm going to just encourage, make sure we can try to see this game out and go to 4 5 1, defend for the final five minutes. Right, Fanny now goes inside to Sorte, to the Finn, to Apaya. Apaya straight, yes! Get in there! Benjamin Apaya makes it. Eggerson's two. Viken Stavanger nil. Are we going to secure Champions League football today? It's in front of a sellout crowd of 3,100, by the way, as well. It also sees us ending the season with only four defeats, which is a record for us. Absolutely fantastic. With 10 draws, 16 wins, we have secured second place in the league. Absolutely insane. Confirm our best ever finish qualifying for the 2031 Champions League. Uh, we have a 7.5 million budget with 74,000 per week wages. Christian Sund falling. We've got 2 million as well for finishing in that position, which sees us go up to 12 million in the bank. A 6 million profit season as well, which is fantastic considering we didn't get any European football. And that was my biggest worry. No European football. Were we going to make profit this season? Next year, during next season, we have the qualifying for the Champions League, etc. So I expect a, profit, a profitable season next year as well. Absolutely delighted with how we've done there. Absolutely delighted. So let's recap the season first off. We came in second place, 58 points. In terms of teams detailed, average possession, we dominated at 59%. So we are starting to become a possessional based team. And with 59% possession, we absolutely dominated that. And in terms of the attacking side of things, let me just find 
where that starts. So top goal scorers, we came down in sixth place with only 48 goals scored, which in 30 games isn't bad, but we need more goals next season. Defensively is where we did it. 24 goals conceded all season, the best defensive record in the league. In terms of salary per annum, we are the second lowest spender still at 2.1 million, uh, 22 million model to spend, and we managed to do better than them. We finished in Champions League, they finished in third, and we spend 20 million a year less than them at the minute, which I'm really, really pleased with. In terms of the spend, we were in a positive for 3.14 million, so we did really well there. Hunnefoss spent a million and still got relegated, which is a bit upsetting for them. Um, so going down, sorry, first off, we'll look. I was um, Ollison, Christiansen, and Hunnefoss. Well, Ollison could actually still survive. Um, Arndal and Ranheim in the quarterfinals there. Going up was Orson and um, Grawrud go up as well, which is a bit of a shock. They've never been even close to it. They've been second tier side most time. They have gone up. Going down were two of our local sides in Brina and Sanders Ulf, uh, Ulkissa in the playoffs. Coming up from the third tier then, let's have a look at that, shall we? Coming up is Oslo and Jörg in the playoffs going down with Stabek to Varg, Hogerson and Sarsborg to and it from the second um, division B was Mjordalen and Jokerun in the playoffs and going down was um, Sogndal to Lisa Kloster and Olesen to coming up from the fourth tier Fredrikstad's B team Christiansen's B team um, Mulder's B team Sotra's B team, Ulluren, Ulu, sorry, who beat us in the cup, by the way, so they do deserve to go up. They were very good in the cup against us. And Strumman also going up as well. So not many B teams coming up, which is nice because the second, sorry, the third tier has been dominated by B teams recently. In fact, just quickly, I didn't look at it. Did beat, no, so okay, so an A team did actually win the league. A B team came second. And at this level as well, let's have a look. Yeah, it was an A team, A team, A team. Okay, so the B teams haven't dominated as much as they have in the past. But there's still quite a lot of B teams in the third tier of Norwegian football at the minute. So like I do say, I am hoping our B team can go up this season. And um, They've done really, really well. If I look at the squad in terms of player-wise, they've, they've had some talent playing in this level this season. The likes of Schneider's done really well for them. Four goals, seven assists this season. We had already looked at the young Moroccan with four goals in seven games as well. Uh, Sort has been playing down there the last few games as well with um, five games he's played. A few of our long-standing players are leaving us this season. The likes of Sorter, who has been with us since 2024, is going to be leaving the club after six years at the club. But now I want to move on to our youth team because they've done really, really well. Um, they have won the Rogland division again, unbeaten with a positive goal difference of 119. Now you will see here they didn't win promotion, losing to Frederikstad 4-2. In the playoff final, so unfortunately, we are going to have another division at this, another season at this level in this division. But I'm not too disappointed with that because it does give us a bit more time for our players to develop. Uh, Lingden ended up being our first choice keeper for our B team this season, playing 42 games. I'm going to try to sign him. He has grew to six foot now. 17 years old. I am going to try to sign him, see if he can play another season for our under 19s. He, he's not good enough to play for our first team. Unfortunately for him, we have Sebastian Hansen, who's now 24. Actually a real player. Came through in the academy of Rollin in 2021. And picked up from odds has just been fantastic this season. A 6 foot 3 is tall enough to be a dominant goalkeeper. And you can see he has a lot of positive attributes this season. But Lingden, I think, could be a good player long term for Norwegian football. So as I continue to develop and grow our academy, I do think I would like to have him in the club. But in terms of the players, they've, they've done really, really well. But there's one player I do want to give a massive shout-out to, and one player who I do think next season could potentially 
being our first team. That is Emmanuel Irrecorza, who we did sign in 2029 on a free transfer. This season, he's played for our B team, playing 22 games, scoring 12 goals. So he has done really well for our B team, but for our youth team, he's just been phenomenal. He has played 31 games, scoring 37 goals. And Irrecorza, I think... At the age of 19, is ready to step up and play some football, if if off the bench, some football for our B team. Sorry, for our first team next year. And he will be made available for our B team. I mean, we've got to mention, he is a Burundi international playing six games for them. Um, but I just think he's ready. Honestly, I think he's ready and he could be a good player next year for our first team. In terms of other people within our youth team, we do have this um, youngster we signed from KFUM Oslo. Is he ever going to be good enough for the first team? Sadly, I don't think he is. But if our B team becomes playable, then maybe he could step up and be a good player for them. But we kind of on a on a tilting point at the minute because we don't know if next season our B team will become playable. I did register a lot of the players for them. A lot of our players have had good good time for our B team last year. So it's just about trying to find out and see how it goes. But going back to our first team then, the first off appearances, our most, appe- uh, most appeared, our most capped player this season was Sorte. 36 starts, three sub appearances. Scallon, the same, 36 starts, one sub appearance. Jurgensen with 34, uh, Christian the Finn with 31 starts, Hansen with 31 starts, hopefully more next season. In terms of top goals, goal, it was Sorto as well with 17, 17, 17 goals scored this season for him. Um, you can't see it to be on my head. I'm going to move it, I think, to... We'll move it there so you can see games played in position. So he did play 20... Do you know what? This is why I like this episode. Because sometimes when you're playing football manager, you have that perception. Okay, I've been using him as a central midfielder, etc, etc. Throughout this season, he has played 25 games as a striker, scoring 13 goals. He's played 14 games in central midfield. Earlier in this episode, I said he has been... A centre midfielder. I like him more in centre midfield. He's been a good centre midfielder. He's scored more goals from striker. And he actually got more assists from playing in the striker position as well. Sometimes when doing these reviews, you realise how much you've actually used players in specific positions. I would guess it's because he's played so much recently in central mid again that you almost forget, almost look past... How he's been doing. You almost forget that he's played this many games in specific positions. So he has done well as a striker as well then. But 17 goals. Christian the Finn with 7. Knapskoog with 7. Apaya with 5. Urshaw with only 3. I mean, 18 starts. 10 a striker, no goals. So when you can see again, I've been using him on the right wing a bit. And he scored three goals from the right wing in 16 games, picked up three assists. Didn't score a single goal in his 10 games as a striker. He's 22 now. I don't think he's going to be a striker going forward. If he performs well on the wing, fair enough. But three assists and three goals from the wing is also not acceptable. I'm just going to check here. Lorenz, Alf Eric Lorenz, who we signed from Viking Stavanger. So you can see here, picked him up from Viking Stavanger. So he's played 13 games on the wing, seven from just normal midfield, right? That's again when I'm rotating to the more defensive tactic, etc. One goal, one assist from both positions. It's just not good enough. It's not good enough. But again, he's only 19. I do think he can continue to develop. Apaya, for example, as well. Let's have a look. Left wing, he's played a couple from the right wing this season as well, but left wing, 24 starts, 4 goals, 6 assists. It's again, it's just it's just not good enough. We really do need to improve. Christian the Finn, 
And then you look at this. If my wingers had the same, if all of my midfield had, say, nine assists and seven goals, I'd be delighted. So 34 games, seven goals, nine assists from Christian the Finn. It's just so much better. If we look at Knapsku, who was injured at the end. So 30 games played. I mean, I'm shocked he's played that many games. They're not all for me, are they? Um, he's played 24 games, 25 games for me this season. So, But seven goals, five assists, again, has been not been bad. And again, shows an improvement and development compared to my wingers. Carlo Vinicius. So 12 games as striker, one goal, two assists. Left wing, four games, one goal, one assist. So almost 50% of the games from the left wing, he has a goal on assist. Right wing, one game, no goals, no assists. But going into next season, we really do need to make dramatic changes in terms of in terms of our personnel, I think, attacking-wise. I'm not sure. This will not be our starting lineup going into the start next season. Will it be the fact that we have that Burundi striker coming in from our youth team instead of Vinicius? Will it be the fact that Urshal starts on the right wing? Um, he has been out massively, by the way, with two to four months during an Achilles injury if we go to injuries. Um, and then we just highlight this season, for example, is the last four. So you can see here, five days, four weeks, two days. He's currently been out for two months, and he's going to be out for another two to four months. So it's almost a half-season injury there as well. Oh, There's a lot of changes that need to be made. There's a lot of changes that need to be made. Now, in the next season, I'm going to go to four videos. So we're going to do four or three, I think. We're going to do the... End of, sorry, the start of season. We are going to do the end of the current season in terms of when the coefficients reset. Then we are going to do the end of August. Then we're going to do the end of season. So it's going to go back to four, which will be shorter videos because I've seen people request that in the comments and in a community post I put out. So it's going to be two videos a, a week. Still, one season will be over two weeks. So hopefully you do enjoy it. I'm torn of how this winter is going to go. Join me in the next episode where we start the new season and we try to understand the changes that are needed to just get us more goals, more assists. Just continue to make us more successful. We've qualified for the Champions League, so we have a good side. But if we can just get that extra 5%, that extra 10%, will be a great side. I've been Paul, also known as the Northman. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning, continuing to support this series. I'll see you next time.